Allah purify our hearts. Our sajda should be mainly for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time when our hearts are clean. So I was talking about very beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated and came to Madinah al Munawwara. Migrated from Makkah al Mukarram and came to. Where, where was he born? Where was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam born? His place of birth is Makkah al Mukarram. You know, a few years ago, so I think before the lockdown, I saw a video on WhatsApp. So this happened somewhere in the UK where, where in the month of Ramadan, a non Muslim came to the masjid at the time of iftar, Maghrib time. And he was pretending to be a Muslim, but he was a non Muslim. There's no need to pretend. The iftar, the food, Rasulullah so migrated and came to Medina. First nasihat he gave, first nasihat, first advice. He said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, at'imu ta'am, feed the hungry. Feed the hungry. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't say, only feed the believers. Only your Muslim brothers and sisters, feed them. No, he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, at'imu ta'am, feed the hungry. Feed the the hungry, irrespective of his deen, his religion, whether he is Muslim, Hindu, hai, <coughs> Christian, hai. as long as he is hungry for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, feed him. Ya so there is no need to pretend, that is the beauty of our deen. And this is the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we should, as the ummah, we should try to follow the teaching of Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam, you make tabligh, you invite people towards deen. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you tawfiq. But when it comes to feeding and giving, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ayyu nas at imu ta'am. If someone is hungry, agar koi bhuka hai, then feed them. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this brother who came, he was pretending to be a Muslim. Now the regular Muslims of the Majid knew that he is not a Muslim. So they took him one side and they said, we know you're not a Muslim, but I'm saying the, the iftar, the food that we have in the masjid is for everyone. You don't need to pretend to be a Muslim. He said, no, 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 no. He was stubborn too. He said, I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. So they asked him a few questions. You know, our Muslims too, sometimes they get excited. So it's a hard job, munazara, debate. Don't worry about Maulana. Leave the Juma talk for Maulana. Now we're going to debate with you. So they asked him a few questions. He said, first question. What is the name of the final prophet of Islam? <coughs> Same time, foreign, instantly he said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Mashallah. He said, you got the first one right, let's see if you can get the second one right. So they asked him, where was he born? Abdul Pazgaya. He started to think now. So he says, Pakistan. <laughs> and we have our Pakistani brothers. <laughs> he said, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We all know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in Makkatul Mukarramah. And he lived in Makkatul Mukarramah for how many years? 53 years. How many years? 53 years. And then he migrated and came to Madinatul Munawwara. When the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Madinah to Munawwara, he gave nasiyat to the people of Madinah. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know my, my respected brothers and sisters, one hadith of Rasulullah, just one hadith is sufficient for us. One of his mujizat and miracles of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ulama ikram had mentioned, is that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of his mujizat, one of his miracles, that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speech used to be concise yet comprehensive. Just one hadith. You know, in the amalu bin niyat is one portion of the hadith of Rasulullah. The significance of niyat and intention. Ulama ikram have written volumes of books on just in the amalu bin niyat. His speech is concise yet comprehensive. So one hadith and Allah give us tawfiq to make amal upon. There is no need to give a very lengthy, long bayan. Very beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he migrated and came to Madinah al Munawwara. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, at'imu ta'am, feed the hungry. Number one. 
O people, at'imu ta'am. See what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling the people of Medina. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not talking about namaz. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not talking about making tilawat of the Holy Quran, about individual ibadat. First thing, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, feed the hungry. Thereafter, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wa afshu salam, and spread salam. Last night, I was in Durban. In a mafil, world renowned Nath reciter, Al Haj Muhammad Uwais al Qadri, he was, mashallah, reciting. And he also mentioned this. And he said, What a big crowd. He said, In the present day and age, we read namaz, we give zakat, we do a lot of charity work. Sabhuta, alhamdulillah. We perform these various good deeds, alhamdulillah. But something that Nauzubillah is destroying all our a'mal, our our good deeds, is that hasad in the heart. The jealousy in the heart. That we, this unity that we have, Allah Akbar. This nafrat and this hatred that we have, Allah Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. Mawla dil ka zang chuda. And I want everyone to say, Ameen. Mawla dil ka zang chuda. Talbe nuri pae jila. Dil ko kar de aayna. Jis mein chamke ye kalma. La ilaha illa Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam. Wa salam, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and spread salam. When you see and you meet your Muslim brothers and sisters, what, what should you do? Greet them. Make salam. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See, when I came here, I met a shaykh. So what I said, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is this? this? This salam shouldn't come from just the lips. It should come from the heart. When you are saying to your Muslim brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum, that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not talking about when you meet your Muslim brothers and sisters, just make salam and that's it. Zuban say, with the tongue. No, no, no. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is educating the Sahaba Ikram that when you greet one another, it should come from the heart. And what is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh? You are actually giving, I was actually giving Ashraf by a guarantee. I'm giving you a guarantee, Ashab, by you are my Muslim brother, that I have no hasad, no jealousy, no books, no nafrat, no hatred, no malice in my heart for you. Mira dil, my heart is clean for you. When you meet your Muslim brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum, but what we see? Ajkal in the present day, eh, the salam just comes from the tongue. Then you turn around and you say, Ye salat to esai to esai. <laughs> So, <laughs> dil se salam nahi hai. Salam ka matlab ye hai. You are giving guarantee to your Muslim brothers and sisters. Ki my heart is clean. Mere dil mein koi hasad nahi hai. This is very, very important. Mar ke jana ek din, one day we are going to leave this world. How are we going to face our creator by respect to brothers and sisters? When the heart is so dirty, the heart has to be. You know, it is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a believer's heart your dil kya hai? Your dil, heart. It says, a believer's heart is more significant than the Holy Kaaba. In ka dil, a believer's heart is more pure, more significant than the Holy Kaaba. Momin ka dil hai. But not when the momin's heart and the believer's heart has hasad, jealousy, nafrat, hatred. No, when it is pure. When it is clean, when the nur of iman is in the heart, the heart is clean, the heart is pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. This is the deal, this is the heart that we are going to take to our graves. And this is the heart that we are going to present in the divine court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. One of the missions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as mentioned in the Holy Quran, لَقَدْ بَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنَّا إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My messenger, my habib, my beloved, my nabi, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He is going to recite the verses of the Holy Quran to his ashab and his companions. And the effect that it will have, he won't just recite it like that. The effect that it will have, while you zakki him, he will purify their hearts. Just imagine the hearts of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, talking about the companions, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and hidayah to follow in the footsteps. Their hearts were so clean. Allahu Akbar. No discrimination. No racism. Nothing. Who united them? Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who purified their hearts? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who educated them? Who gave them tarbiyat? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is mentioned, we all know Hazrat Bilal. Hazrat Bilal was an African. Habshi Tina, Abyssinia, current Ethiopia. And we all know that Hazrat Bilal Habshi that Allah before was a slave. And you know the African slaves in Arab at that time were the cheapest slaves. The cheapest. And then a time came when Hazrat Bilal Habshi that Allah accepted Islam. And every time the owner of Hazrat Bilal, Umayyah bin Khalf, used to oppress him, it used to bring tears to the eyes of Rasulullah. Huzur wrote it. To Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar, first Khalifa of Islam, Yari Ghari Mustafa, Yari Mazari Mustafa, that personality who was always in the company of Rasulullah, and even today he is resting at the feet of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa till the day of Qiyamah. Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar, first Khalifa of Islam. When he saw this, he went and bought a Bilal. His owner, Umayyah bin Khalf, used to oppress him so much when he accepted Islam, and used to say to him, the only thing you need to do is forsake the deen of Muhammad. And all this will come to an end. And what he said, Hazrat Bilal used to say, I will never ever forsake the deen of Muhammad, but for the sake of the deen of Muhammad, Bilal will give his life. And you own this body, you, just, you bought me, I'm a slave, you own this body, you don't own this heart. The day Bilal decided the kalma, he took his heart and placed it at the feet of Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Bilal, actually we all know African. Then you have Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari. These are companions. We should know their names also. We are wasting our time knowing Pisharu Khan Kone or Sharu Khan Kibiri Kone. Huh? How will that benefit us in dunya and akhirat? Pisharu Khan Kone, Uski Bibi Kone, Uski Bache Kone. Some of our brothers and sisters, Pura Malu Me Khandal. Sharu Khan's father, Sharu Khan, where he was born. Huh? His net worth, Kitna Pesa Uski Pas. His first girlfriend, his high school sweetheart, his support, Cristiano Ronaldo, Kitney girlfriends. We should learn the